Well, Russia's Prime Minister is giving a bleak assessment of Moscow's tense relationship with the West. Dmitry Medvedev says it could be described as a new Cold War. He made the comments at a security conference in Munich a day after top diplomats announced a pause in the fighting in Syria, set for next week. But the US and France are still playing on the criticism, accusing Moscow of bombing legitimate opposition groups and civilians. Mr. Medvedev says he sometimes wonders if he's living in 1962. NATO's policy with regard to Russia remains unfriendly and opaque. One could go as far as to say that we have slid back to a new Cold War almost on an everyday basis. We are caught one of the most terrible threats either to NATO as a whole or to Europe or to the United States. Uh, Nick Robertson, international diplomatic editor, joins us now from Munich. Uh, Nick, we've seen that angry reaction from Russia, talking about a return to the Cold War tensions from more than 40 years ago. What's been the reaction there? Well, uh, Prime Minister Medvedev made those comments after listening to the French Prime Minister say, complain and criticize Russia for its bombing of what the French Prime Minister said was civilians around Aleppo. Um, tensions, even in this normal cordial security conference, have been, have been somewhat higher than normal because Syria is a very big topic at the moment and there are a lot of security concerns and a lot of them focus on Russia. So those comments from the Russian Prime Minister surprised a lot of people here. I sat down with the supreme allied commander of NATO, their top military general, U.S. four-star general uh, Philip Breedlove, and asked him about uh, Medvedev's description of NATO as being opaque and unfriendly uh, and that a slip towards the Cold War. You know, he this has pointed out that Russia is the one that's crossed illegally international borders. Russia is the one that's annexed Crimea. Russia, he says, um, their assessment, the military assessment from NATO is that Russia isn't just trying to change the rules, it's trying to rewrite the rule book here. He also talked about these um, anti-access area denial uh, uh, missile systems that Russia has, their so-called A2AD systems that Russia has positioned in now in Kaliningrad, in St. Petersburg, in Crimea, and even now um, in, the, um, in northern Syria. These are systems that will target planes, they will target ships at sea, they will target bridges and roads, so it, it, uh, targeting ground forces as well. This is a concern for NATO. So this is how he he explained to me NATO perceives uh, what Medvedev is saying about a Cold War. Isn't this, by definition, the Cold War? Arms build up close to the Well, borders? they are entitled to their understanding of this and their description of this. We in NATO do not want to see a Cold War. We do not talk about it. It is not what we want to happen or anticipate happening. We're a defensive alliance who are arraying ourselves to face a challenge in we see. That challenge is a nation that has once again decided that it will use force to change internationally recognized borders. And so we take those appropriate actions to be able to assure, defend, and deter. And part of, the, part of those appropriate actions uh, for NATO has been to increase rotational and troop presence close to um, NATO's eastern border with Russia because of this perceived uh, situation in Russia. So although he says this is not a Cold War, um, there are elements of it that do appear to be in play. And Nick, what do you think this deteriorating relationship between Russia and the West means for Syria and, and the possibility of a long-term solution? You know, when you hear the comments uh, such that uh, Prime Minister Medvedev came, gave today uh, and you hear also the pressure on Russia, it really gives you an indication of the strain inside the meetings like the one here uh, on Thursday uh, that, that led to this new determination to have a, a cessation in hostilities in Syria. And from what I understand, talking to people who were in that meeting, that there was a real hope that Russia could be convinced, OK, there's a cessation in a week, but in the meantime, just slow down your offensive near Aleppo. 
that hasn't happened. Um, so, you know, I think, I think it really speaks to the very, very real tensions that exist and the difficulty to get everyone on the same page. But what you would hear U.S. Secretary of State John Kerry and others say is that Russia is now in a political process, um, that it has signed up to those agreements just a couple of days ago for the cessation, that uh, it's agreed to the U.N. Security Council resolution. So it is being pushed, if you will, in the right direction direction, but it's not going there very willingly, it seems. Yeah. Okay. Nick Robertson in Munich, thank you very much. Well, still to come on CNN Newsroom, Donald Trump says he could sue Ted Cruz on the eve of tonight's Republican presidential debate. What's behind that threat next? Also, we'll look at how Jeb Bush is getting some help from his famous brother as he tries to jumpstart his own campaign. That and much more still ahead.